Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, it's Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. The most celebrated new play on Broadway is August Osage County, and now one of America's most eminent character actresses. Do you, do you mind if I call you a character actress? No. All right. One of America's <laughs> most eminent character actresses has taken over the lead. I dispense with the character part. She's a wonderful, wonderful actress, and she's an old friend of mine, Estelle Parsons. Welcome to an Theater old Talk. Colleague, of uh, when you were an actor. All right, now oh, tell no. us the story right away of how you two first. How, how did you two first meet? I'll let you tell the story. No, you tell it. It's good. I was going to do Miss Margarita at Columbia, and you were a student there. I was a student at Columbia, and we should say Miss Margarita's Way, a play that was very successful for, yes. for you on Broadway. Yes. Yes. Uh, you did it up at Columbia when I was a student. And I had the huge part of the student in it, the part but that has no lines. How did you get that part? Oh, knowing him, he. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of Eve Harrington? <laughs> uh, I, you know, honestly, I don't remember. I think it was the it was uh, Howard. Howard oh, Stern, yeah. who is the chairman of the Columbia, is is Howard no. Stein. Stein. Yes, not was, Howard Stern. Howard Stein. No, Howard yes. Stein, yeah. He was the chairman of the Columbia Theater Department, yeah. and yeah. he just plucked me out of class because, yeah. you know, I looked... Because you were perfect for the part. I remember. She was... Uh, it was so much fun with you, Michael. I know, but you terrified me. I but mean, you, you see, I remember you. I don't remember, <laughs> like, 99 others I had around the world, but I remember <laughs> Michael. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> she is, like, eating me alive at every performance, because I I don't know if you know the place. Susan, oh, indeed but, I do. You know, it's, it's theater. It's, it's not thrilling. real life. I know. It's I know. theater. But you used to say to me in the dressing room, uh, I remember, because we share the little dressing room there, and I'd say, okay, I have to go out and sit in the audience because yes, he I comes down from the audience to go on. I'd say, I'd say um, okay, I'll see you out there, Estelle. And, she, and you'd say, be good. <laughs> really? Yes. Well, that's be on your toes, young man. <laughs> well, welcome back to Broadway. You're just terrific. Thank you. Terrific as the hilarious, brilliant, terrifying mother in yeah. August. Uh, I want to ask you, the last time you were on Broadway, I think it was 2002, the revival of Mornings at 7. Yeah. It seems a long time for you not to be uh, on stage where you're always so terrific. How come you waited well, so long? Well, I spent a lot of time working with Al Pacino mm -hmm. on Oedipus and on Salome. Mm -hmm. I have in my mind we spent seven years working on that stuff, but I don't think that could be true. When you were doing it with him where? At the well, we worked at the actor's studio yeah. and got the productions together there, and then... And you and did then, that on Broadway, Salome, right? Yeah, 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 we did. We did it at St. Anne's in yes. Brooklyn, we yes. did it at the Bar Divine in Poughkeepsie, then we did it on Broadway, then we did it in California, and now it's uh, be becoming a movie. I think he's almost finished the movie. I didn't have anything. I mean, I'm in the movie, but he he wanted to do a movie of it. So right. well, that's I called Salome Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, it's like only it's not like looking for Richard. I mean, it's a real Al creation. Right. Sort of a documentary about the making of Salome. Yeah. And I just thought that, uh, well, yeah, kind of ruminations on it more than a documentary, you know, mm. but I just thought that looking for Richard was so original yeah. that when he said, would I work with him, I said, yeah, right, sure, because I have such a respect for that kind of creativity in our uh, very confined, mm -hmm. you know, whatever we do, showbiz. <laughs> and his creativity was so original. So, and so that we kept had a you... wonderful time. And that I worked on that a lot, and I had to give up a lot of acting jobs. A James Lapine play, I felt terrible that I couldn't do it. Yeah. But I gave up an awful lot of stuff because we were having a wonderful time. <laughs> Al and Diane and Marissa Tomei and David Strather. And I mean, we had in BD1, we had wonderful yeah. time, Aidan Quinn, all kinds of wonderful people. When is that movie going to come out? I don't know. It was supposed to come last year now. Maybe it'll come next year. I think he's getting close to finishing. We shot something a couple of weeks ago at the studio. So. Mm -hmm. Now, had you seen August before you went I into saw play? August after. I was doing a play with David Gordon when it opened in December. Mm -hmm. So then I saw it later. Everybody was talking about it, talking about it. And finally, I got to see it. Mm -hmm. And that was that. And then I went out with, when they switched theaters, I went out with Rondi Reed, who went on to win a Tony. Yeah, wonderful. Who's, who's a 
a person that I played with at Steppenwolf in Chicago and a friend, mm -hmm. and Laurie Metcalf, mm -hmm. who, of course, I knew from Steppenwolf and from Roseanne. Roseanne. Yeah. Yeah. And we went out one night, and we were walking down 8th Avenue, and Rondi said, you know, Deanna's leaving. Why don't you play that part, Estelle? And I was like, uh. what? Huh? <laughs> huh? What? You know, Deanna weighs about 90 pounds. Right. Deanna, what's her name? Deanna um, Dunnigan. 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 So did yeah, you go and call time. your agent and say... Get, no, help. I just thought, this is insane. I mean, I'm Miss Health. I can't help it. I'm Swedish, you know. And <laughs> I thought, wow, what's that about? Right. And uh, then I thought about it four or five days, and then I called Ronnie and I said, you know, Ronnie, really might be interested in that if you and Laurie think that it's such a perfect fit for me because I kept saying, you're perfect for that part, you're perfect for that part. And I kept saying, how can that be? How can that be? <laughs> so uh, I think they'd uh, offered it to a couple of other people and they were waiting on Lily Tomlin. Yes, I remember they were interested. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you have to audition? Well, I, I don't know the answer to that. When I got <laughs> interested in it, yes. I said uh, I would like to go in and meet Anna Shapiro, the uh -huh. director, whom I didn't know. And mm -hmm. I know it gets, there's a little area there where it gets sticky. Should we talk to that person? Should we ask her to read? What yes, should we do? Yes. And, I, and usually to avoid that, because I'm happy to audition for anything, any chance to get up in front of people and act is fine with me. Mm -hmm. So I said, I really want to go in and meet her, and I'd like to read if she'd like me to read, since she doesn't know me, and I don't look anything like that part. And sometimes, particularly in television, someone would want to write a series for me, and they would all come to New York, and Estelle Parsons is going to meet them. Well, I tend to be depressed a lot. So in my real life, not having any idea what characters they are writing or anything, just the Estelle Parsons, who was probably Miss Margarita or something right, to them. Right, I go right, in right. to meet them and I'm, you know, today I look pretty good, but lots of times I don't look too good at all and be very depressed and go in and monosyllabic because I'm from New England. And I go out thinking, what? <laughs> what did we want to do with that woman? So I'm always happy to read because then I have a yeah. character to play and then I come to life, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. In real life, I come to death. But in, <laughs> but, well, we all do. But in artistic <laughs> life, I go you to fly. life. <laughs> so you went in. So you met with the director? Yeah, and so I met and met and did the dinner, read the dinner scene. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they picked that scene to read, but it may be that people have trouble with some of the expressions that she uses, which I better not say on the air. Because well, the dinner scene does show the range of this part. The dinner but it's scene got, yeah, I guess range. so, and it's got a, a lot of kind of nasty stuff. And yeah, I yeah. think it's uh, hard for, my experience is that it's hard for some actresses to, uh, to do to, that To do a nasty stuff. bit? Yeah, to do that, yeah. But isn't, it always, but fun to play, isn't oh. it always fun to play the villain? Well, you know, you can't go by me because I have this very weird career, but I'm very happy to play whatever's written, whether it's good, bad, or whatever, right, you right. know. I, and I think a lot of actresses don't want to go there, particularly when you get to, I think it's true with men too, when you get 50s or 60s and so you have an image of yourself and what you want to convey or portray and mm. and you don't, you're less um, flexible. I mean, you're not still looking to get somewhere. You've gotten somewhere. Right, right. So you're you're perhaps a little less courageous. Well, you, you, I don't know. It depends on the person. I'm, I'm just making this up. I don't well, know what their <laughs> idea is. <laughs> but you, but you, you've always, and, and that now you've, you've grown into your, your middle age, that you, you look like a person. I mean, that so many women are getting, you know, yeah, the actresses yeah. refuse to look. Yeah. Like a, in the, person. like a person, oh, and that I, this is this. They you know, all look alike. And from Bonnie <laughs> and Clyde on, you looked like a person, and you were so wonderful and special. I, I do want to say, when I was watching uh, August Osage County, I wondered how did she, if she saw Deanna done again, make a new interpretation? I mean, no, I, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean to make a new interpretation. Oh, well, I've never replaced anybody, but I understood from my my own background experience, mm -hmm. that if you replace somebody, and I guess because I went to a lot of shows in Boston, mm -hmm. where instead of Henry Fonda in, uh, what was that thing that Jackie Lemon was in about the Navy or something, Mr. Roberts? Mr. Roberts, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when I was a kid, and Henry Fonda didn't come to Boston, but a lookalike did, so <laughs> you went to see it, and you 
for you it was just as good yeah, as Sandy Johnson Fonda. Came. Right. <laughs> so I thought, if I'm going to replace, you see how stupid it is, old childhood things. But I thought, if I'm going to replace someone, I'm going to try to look like her. And I had had my hair dyed this color for another show. So I just went to my hairdresser with a picture of Deanna and said, cut my hair like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm wearing all her clothes. I did not intend to reinterpret it. Hmm. That's so oh, interesting because I, I know, just so intended to replace her. Now I know she weighs about half what I weigh. <laughs> yeah, but, so a little, um, little bit of a bird. Uh, <laughs> my idea was was simply to fit into the well, you fit in ensemble, but, but you you take different beats differently. I you, guess you by now, you, I you, guess, you just there's yeah. different. Uh, it's like a different musical instrument. I get yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, oh you know what that uh, what's his Charles Isherwood said that I was the like drum a, critic, yeah. she's a rattlesnake and I'm a snapping turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> Snapping turtle. <laughs> but he saw it like three weeks into it. Listen, dear, it was a rave review. Yes, yes I can't be a in one minute. <laughs> I'll be free snapping turtles for a review like that. That's right. Well, so should you say that? Because but so it gets more and more different. I, th I think it gets more and more me all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. no, but I, but I wanted to. to but, but I'm just trying to play the play. She this character and it's you know it's this big family there's many important characters but in a sense you're the most important one and you're the matriarch you're the matriarch and but this character is so uh she's a drug addict and she's so mean and cutting a, a great deal of the time do you find that that uh, uh kind of gets to you after a while uh, no she i love her she's a human being well i mean not in judging her but then in, <laughs> as you're walking around do you find that uh that some actors some method actors, and you're a method actor, aren't you? Susan's yeah. trying to ask you, are you really nasty to the cast well, do you backstage? Find you're getting nasty I'm to a me? nasty yeah, person. <laughs> the truth is, I'm a nasty person. Okay. And I think that's why Laurie and Rodney thought I'd be so good. I finally thought that last week I said, you know, they know my basic ingredient is nastiness, and that's why they thought well, I'd be. Now good I don't for know that. you, so I've had walking. Okay. You were so nice to me when we were in that okay, play no, together. But the play was nasty. The play was Miss Margarita. I believe me, it occurred to me, boy, it's political so totalitarianism, I, right? Yes. I was telling you well, before the cameras rolled. When I remember being a teenager back in Chicago, and I would look at at Theater Week and think. That actress, that's the kind of actress I want to be, didn't turn out. But, but you know, because you look like a real person and I yeah. followed your roles, but then you started it as a newswoman. Well, I, I got a, I came to New York to visit. I never had the guts to come to New York to be a musical, another Ethel Merman, which was in my dreams to be another Ethel Merman. But uh, I came to visit and I happened to know a guy at NBC, a vice president who'd married, I think, my college roommate's sister or something, and he said, hey, go see Mort Werner about the Today Show. And I hadn't any intention to be in New York, but I went to see him, and we hit it off. We became fast friends. His whole family visited us in New Hampshire all the time and, and everything, and he was starting the Today Show. So he said, oh, boy, just go home and write me a resume, which I had no idea what it was. So I went back to Marblehead mm -hmm. in Massachusetts and wrote my whole life story, single space, <laughs> got it onto two pages, <laughs> then sent it in to him. And then he hired me. And then my father said, we Parsons don't leave home. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I, I, I was already a politician. I was already the first woman and youngest person elected to the planning board in Marblehead, Massachusetts, <laughs> with Nelson Aldrich. It's a very old town, you yeah, know, yeah, with yeah. signer of the Declaration of Independence. So it was a big deal to be on the planning board. And I had to give that up. I said, oh, I'm only going for six months, Daddy. I'm only going for six months, and then I'll be back. I was such a and you coward. were on your way. So you were the such and you, a coward. <laughs> you were, but you were the first. You before yeah, so the Walters. You were the person. There were the eight of us who yeah. put it together. Dave wasn't even hired. Then we Dave had Garraway, this right. troop of comedians come in and. Everybody'd sit and look at them. Were you studying acting at that point? I mean, were you, were, were you really coming? I never studied acting in my life. You know, you, you no. Never... I started in a community theater when I was just seven years old, ah. and I played leads in children's plays all that time. So I knew, I knew, I knew. I made people cry in the audience, and of course, I heard them laugh. Mm -hmm. Then I'd hear the pocketbooks open and the sniffling because I 
I played all kinds of stuff for them. Yeah. I played in the Land of Oz, a little boy who turned into a princess. I've never quite figured that out. <laughs> but I was about nine, you know, and I was playing this little boy riding a hobby horse, and all of a sudden I go back and say, my mother would put this princess outfit on me, and out I'd go. So, so I worked from the time I was seven, so I had no truck with learning to act. Well, because <laughs> you were acting. I was acting all my life. But I, I, so I'm harping on the Today Show because I, I want to go back to the fact that you were the a total television pioneer, the first yeah. woman oh, on God, the Today it was Show. Oh, great. Those days right. were great. But, but, and wait, then but, you walked away from it. But, 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 but one second. Well, but, I wasn't interested in it. But, but I have to ask, we have to ask you that you didn't, sorry, you didn't start out to be the presenter of the Today Show, were you no, no, no. just working behind the scenes? No, 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 I was the production assistant, yeah. and uh, then I was the fashion editor, the literary editor, the this editor, the that editor. Can you editor. imagine a literary editor for a television yeah. show? It's, it was a different It world. was wonderful, and I gave yeah. Dave the books, you see. I had all kinds of wonderful writers on. Yeah. I mean, it was just a fantastic, knowing everybody, fantastic experience. And one day he said, you, he walked by my desk, because we're, you know, in the window of the RCA exhibition hall, and he walked by my desk, he said, you know more about this book than I do, so why don't you talk about it? It happened to be Walt, Walt Kelly's The Glob, The, you know, he wrote a book about evolution, actually. Mm. And so I did it, and they were all, the producers were like, oh, gosh, she's good on camera. <laughs> so then they started uh, sending me out on things, and then I became, the, with Kefauver, I think, I don't know when that was, 62. I, I was the first woman to do political reporting for a network. Women mm. were not allowed. And right. I don't know that they weren't allowed. It's just that news departments and ours was full of these great news guys. No, well, you never saw women. They just didn't No, have and on. they were no. mostly from newspapers and stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, Jerry yeah. Green and Harry Spear and all these people. They were just great guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and little by little, they would send me on these things. And finally, they said, OK, we're going to send her out with Kefauver on the campaign trail. Well, that'd be so, 56, right? Yeah. But you, you weren't seduced by the television world and being a TV personality and. Uh, do you really think it's seductive? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Sign him up. I love it. <laughs> no, it's it's real life, and that's not my bag. But then you got uh, Happy Hunting, the musical. Well, I stayed with that show for five years, and then uh, it was time to go to the Grace Kelly wedding. And I had just had twins. Oh, for and, the Today Show. You were going to cover the Grace Kelly wedding for the Today Show. Yeah. And I was uh, sitting in for Dave when he went on vacation, you know, and I would go, they would put me in a studio to do the, the, the uh, radio promotion for the Today Show, mm -hmm. and they would want 30 seconds or a minute, and I would have no script. And I would talk for 30 seconds about it, or I would talk for a minute about it with no script. Hmm. Can you imagine? And we used to do our commercials with no script. This, uh, some... Uh, Miracle Wonder. whip that you make in <laughs> one minute, you know. We did all this stuff with no scripts. It was just like the beginning of television. And everybody said, nobody will watch it in the morning. Nobody will watch it in the morning, you know. And we did have a rocky six months. And then we got J. Fred Muggs, you know. But the chimpanzee, yeah. But the idea, this staple for TV for Sweever's idea was uh, today, home, and tonight. And there's still tonight, and there's still today. And home, which I went on. First, they were going to make me the head of it, of home, have yeah. a young person coming up. Then they decided Arlene Francis. So I did special projects for them for quite a while, and that didn't work. But later on, the Dinah Shore show, and now yeah. Oprah Winfield. It was meant to be like a that, woman's yeah. magazine show in the daytime. So you see his. His vision of TV, the staples of TV, actually worked. That's Sigourney's father, you call him Sigourney's now. Father? He was a big, big deal when television started. But why did so, you leave for, it? Uh, what was it for? <laughs> you just, you didn't want to go cover the Grace Kelly wedding? You thought, I I'm didn't out. want to go. I had had my twins, and I really didn't like interviewing people. I'd interviewed Eleanor Roosevelt and Keith Fulver and everybody, and Humphrey and Marilyn Monroe, and I just... Sounds I'm thrilling. from New England. I don't <laughs> like to ask anybody anything. <laughs> and when you get to personal questions, which is the good part, right, yeah. I would just hated it. Mm. So Jerry Green was producing. He said, you really got to do this. And I said, oh, Jerry, I really don't want to do that. So we looked at each other and said, this better be the end. Yeah. 
<laughs> and, and then I went into Happy Hunting with Ethel Merman. I auditioned for Abe Barrows and got the job. You know, blue skies. <laughs> and then you became and the I queen was the of girl reporter in uh, Happy Hunting. Yeah. Right. So then when did you start getting into these important off-Broadway plays? Well, right. my, I, you know, I was in my 30s when I did the first play. I was doing musicals, and uh -huh. then they got so boring, flop musical after flop musical. So then I did uh, Three Penny Opera with Lenya. I started looking for uh, important you material, to, intelligent material, I think I should say. So, Estelle, so we have two minutes to get you to Hollywood, into the <laughs> body, get me to Hollywood. into making our, uh, our body and Clyde with Arthur Penn and winning an Academy Award and becoming a star. Now, what happened there? <laughs> well, I was doing a, I saw The Miracle Worker and I wanted to work for Arthur Penn because I thought the performances were so full, Patty Duke and Annie Bancroft. Yeah. So I wheedled a, through friends an introduction to Arthur Penn and I worked with him on the stage and it was, uh, I would say, the most important event in my professional life where all of a sudden I realized I was in the right profession. I did have a very fine talent to develop and all that stuff. And he was going to do Bonnie and Clyde. So I read it and I kept reading. I said, get Madeline Sherwood. This is a secondary role. I don't want to do movies anyway. And then it turned out to be such an interesting part. Mm. And I was so eager to work with him anywhere and everywhere that uh, I did it. And all the time we were making it, they kept saying, you're going to get an Academy Award for this year. Because you see, I was so, my work was so accessible because I had had this really, what do you call it, a seminal experience or something with Arthur Penn where I knew I had a talent. Right. Before the first that, time you knew you had a talent. Yeah, yeah. before what that I could think, you? maybe I'm in the wrong profession. I never got along with directors. I don't know what the other actors are doing. It, <laughs> it, I have a sense of truth that if I try to negate it, I get very, I can't rush myself mm. when I'm working. I, I have to follow my own kind of sense, which I guess everybody does if they have a strong sense of something. God knows what, when you're rehearsing, you know, it's all chaos, but I, I, just, uh, I just couldn't have this things inflicted on it. Like they say, do this, and I would say, well, I, I, I can't do that now. Maybe next week, but I can't do that now. But at that time, I didn't know enough to say that. I just go, <laughs> so no. I kept thinking, I'm in the wrong business. What am I doing here? This but is crazy. I can't get along with anybody. I have to wait for them to leave and get into performance before I can get a performance of my own. And it was all very upsetting. And then working with him, you know, he's just a genius with actors. So he let you just find your own way? Is that, what, is that how Arthur Penn directed? Well, we actually, it's a long story. <laughs> we did an experimental skin of our teeth, Annie Bancroft and myself, Frank Langell and Alvin Epstein. Yeah. And it was all experimental. You'd read the scene and then you'd get up and act it in your own words. Well, for me, this was great mm -hmm. because I love that kind of thing. It's, it's in a way the same technique I use with August. Mm -hmm. You know, you get out there and you don't know what you're going to say next and you're like alive, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. It's just wonderful. Do you change your performance every, every night? I wouldn't say I change it, but I would say it, it depends on who I am each night. What do you mean? Who you I are? mean, uh, I, I, uh, rely on, uh, I rely on my gifts. Mm -hmm. which I'm very confident of. So I don't go out with a preconceived what I'm going to do in terms of behavior and stuff. And so every night comes out a little bit different. Like last night, I just found this great stuff for that crazy thing where I say, I am a drug addict. And I thought, how do you ever get there? And I've been doing it 16 weeks. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden last night, for some reason, everything like built right to where I like knew what that moment was. But I'll never recreate it. I have to just be open to each night. It's much more like being a stand up or But how do the other actors stuff. around you d deal with it? I mean, aren't there because some actors- Because the form's always there. So the blocking never changes? No, no, nothing ever changes. It's, it's just a human being is different today than yesterday. You know, and does anyone notice the difference? Probably if I wave my arms around, they do. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it just takes kind of a different path. And there Even musicians, a... they play the same thing, but it's always alive every night. And I guess that's what I'm getting at. They're yeah. a great group of actors that they, too, are, are probably yeah. working much the same way. Yes, they are. They are, and they change, and they are quite wonderful. It's very exciting to 
work all together. Yeah. You know, it's a dream come true, everybody. On, actors always want ensembles, and producers always want to pick and choose, and you know, Make blah, a star blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But actors really want to work in ensembles, and it works. I mean, and the audience is so in love with the ensemble, yeah, yeah. with the fact that a play is being played, you know. And that everybody in the play has their moment to do their thing. Yeah. yeah that's good. Well, yeah. you're wonderful in August, Osage County, still going uh, strong at the, uh, yeah. the Music Box Theater. And uh, for all you people, young people want to be actors out there, you don't have to study acting. You can just, <laughs> just... Get a job on the Today Show when you're on your way. Or <laughs> go and see Estelle perform. Yes. <laughs> Estelle right. Parsons, thanks for being our guest tonight on Sure. Great fun. Thank you. Hey,